second language. What is the second language? The target language. The target language? Yeah. It's not a native language. Native language. Okay. So can we call it foreign language? Yeah. So what is the difference between foreign language and second language? If foreign language is your native language that you speak with one, the second language is your target that you learn after. Sorry, foreign languages? Is foreign. It's foreign. You said foreign? Yeah. Yes. What did you understand first? Yes, like foreign. No. Foreign. For the igne. They are, or sometimes we pronounce it foreign. <laughs> foreign language. This uh, shot. What is it? What is the difference between foreign language and second language? So you learn a foreign language also after your mother tongue. Yeah. What is but, the difference? Uh, Paruski. First language. Mother, mother tongue. What is it? Paruski. Radnoi. Second language. Nastrani. Это foreign language. Настранный это значит, что это они в ваши стран. Да. Да? Настран. Да. Например, ты здесь, в Турции, это не твои стран. Тогда я заметил. Но думаете, что ты, ты, в Туркменистане, да? Там э, еще ты должна э, учиться русский язык. Это твой second language. Понятно? Yes. In your environment. In your environment. Yes, that, that is the basic difference. Thank you. For example, now English. You're learning English here. Is it second language or foreign language? Foreign. foreign. Second language. No. It is no, foreign. foreign language. Foreign language. Foreign language. Any language that you don't know is a foreign language. Turkish. Let me explain. Zela indeed explained, but I will elaborate on her explanation. It is foreign language. Why? Because English is not spoken in our environment. It is not a language that is spoken by people in Turkey. It is foreign language. It is spoken in America. It is spoken in England, but not here. That's why it is foreign. Can you give an example with the second language? Second language. Turkish. Turkish. Suppose that you are a Turkish student living in America. Okay? And you're learning English then. Then English is your second language then. Why? Because it's spoken in that environment, in America. Is it clear now? Yes. So this is the dif difference between foreign language and second language based on being spoken in the surrounding community for example a Turkish class in Turkey learns English so English for those, those Turkish students is foreign language however suppose that Turkish students live in America and learn in English then it is second language alright this is the basic difference between second language and foreign language Okay, now we've, we acquire our first language, but of course we, we can acquire another language apart from our language. That can be either a second language or foreign language based on the this environment. We acquire. However, as you remember, we talk about the difference between acquisition and learning. Right? 
What is the difference between acquisition and merger? Yes, yes sir. Different between acquisition and learning. Suppose that you get an, a question like this in your exam. Please describe the difference between acquisition and learning and give an example. Learning is the same Acquisition is the Give an example. What do you mean by intentionally? Yani niyet ettim bu dili öğrenmeye. Is intentionally? Niyet etmezsen unintentional olur. Is that this or there is something else? For example, before you start to learn English, you intend to learn English consciously. You learn vocabulary, you learn grammar, you, you learn pronunciation, you, you learn the culture, you learn everything about English. Right? And this is with the guidance of a teacher, someone who can teach you. But think about acquisition. In acquisition, remember Charles video you remember no. yeah when you learn a language naturally by being exposed in a natural setting natural environment then you acquire the language for example math can you acquire it no you have to learn it but language you can both learn it and acquire it if you, if you learn a language within a natural setting without being educated and taught, then you acquire it. The acquisition takes place. However, if you learn language through education, through tutoring, then you don't acquire it, learn it naturally. Clear? Yes. But of course, we acquire language, we acquire our first language, or we can acquire another language that is possible. But while acquiring another language or our foreign language, there are some obstacles. We encounter some problems, right? We face some problems. We call them acquisition barriers. Why? Because there are some barriers who block our way to acquisition. Now, that's why they are called barriers. What kind of barriers we might face in our learning process or acquisition process? What kind of barriers, for example? Any examples? What problem could there be? Could be? What kind of problem you might encounter while learning a language? Yes. Age. Age problem, yes. For example, a child will learn a language or acquire a language differently from an adult or from an elder person. Right? Child, child, uh, age is a factor, a barrier. What else? Lack of native speaker. Hmm? Lack of native speaker. Lack of interaction. Interaction. Native speakers. Okay, what else? Yes? Unwillingness. Um, Unwillingness. That if you are unmotivated, if you're not willing to do it, yeah. then you will have difficulty in acquiring that language. Yes? Uh, maybe you can be afraid of learning a language. Of being afraid, yeah, being scared of making mistakes. Yes, hesitating to learn a language. That's another factor as well. Where are you? What else? No other option? Insufficient what? Time. Not enough time to acquire language. That's also possible. Yes. 
Individuals with attain attainments and great expert expertise in the written language, but not the spoken language. So, sometimes you can see some people who are really good at spoken la uh, at the written language, but they are not good at spoken language. They can write very well, like you, for example. Remember your first year at university? You could read. You could answer any article, but you couldn't speak. You had problem in speaking, right? Why? Because you weren't exposed to the language before in high school or in secondary school. And that's why you couldn't speak at the very beginning. You had trouble. And there's an example of a very famous writer called uh, Joseph Conda. He lived between 1857 and uh, 1924. He wrote novels in English that become classics of English literature. Because he's very good at writing, written language. But of course, he had problem and pronunciation. His English speech retained a strong Polish accent because of his first language. His first language was Polish and that's why he didn't acquire, he couldn't, uh, uh, he had problem in pronunciation. So that happens, right? And there are some reasons for this. So from here we can understand that some features of a second language for example, vocabulary, grammar, are easier to learn than others, such as pronunciation. Because you first acquire those features and then you acquire pronunciation. So without early experience using the sounds and intonation of the L2, even highly fluent proficient adult learners are likely to be perceived as having an accent of some kind. But still, Still, when you are not exposed to the language, some people can speak language very fluent, like, like native speakers. That's also possible. Okay? But there are some reasons for that as well. So we're, we're going to look at the reasons, factors, that uh, causes us to have some problem while acquiring the language. We see some people, they are very good at written language and they are not good at spoken language, or vice versa. They are, spoken at, uh, they are good at spoken language, but they are not good at the written language. <coughs> so, as we said, the age factor, this is one important factor in the learning process, in the acquisition process. 